There are two reasons why you are struggling to judge your positioning when you're pulling up on the left hand side and in this video we're going to look at that today. No fluff, just good stuff. I have had so many messages through social media asking me how do you judge this and if you don't judge it properly this is what happens. Number one, you need to understand how close you need to be to the curb when you're on your driving test because there is quite a lot of leeway when it comes to pulling up on the left. If you're trying to get it perfect, you're going to get it wrong. So reduce the risk by trying to reduce the perfection. It's not essential to be right up on the curb when you're pulling up on the left. Now the two reasons why generally people mess this up is A, they're looking in the wrong place or B, they're traveling too fast. So speed, I always come back to speed for some reason. Not for some reason, it's pretty much one of the main reasons why most things go wrong when it comes to driving. But get your speed right as you're approaching and look in the correct place and it should be much, much easier for you to judge. Now when it comes to speed, reduce your speed before you start moving in. If you're reducing speed as you're coming in, then the likelihood of that going wrong is now increasing. So you definitely don't want to do that. Reduce your speed on the approach to the pull up, then start gradually edging the car towards the curb. Where you're looking also has a major impact. If you are looking, for example, in your wing mirror as you're pulling into the left, well, if you're coming in at an angle, all you're going to see is the space behind you and a massive wide gap, where in reality, the front left wheel is going straight towards the curb. Looking in the wing mirror as you're moving in is a no-no. You can look in the wing mirror after you've settled your position just to give it that extra little tuck in, but don't be checking that wing mirror as you're coming into the curb. I'm gonna say nine times out of 10 where I've seen people smacking into the curb, the speed is too high and they're looking in that wing mirror. I'm gonna pull up on the left and I've got a bay, a nice big wide bay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check my mirrors and signal. If I need to, there's a car there. I'm gonna start reducing my speed. And again, I'm gonna keep my line of sight on the line of this here, the line of the bay right here. And I still haven't checked my mirror on the left-hand side. I slow the car down a little bit more. Now at this speed, I can now look at the mirror. And if you look again in the mirror, I'm nicely tucked in. If I was to be looking at the curb here as I'm coming in, well, the chances of me hitting it, it's a bit like a moth to a flame. What you look at, you go directly at. It's just not what I want to be doing. So I'm keeping my eyes on the width of my car. I'm looking at the width of my car. And I know that this bay here in front of me is big enough for my car. It just makes my life so much easier. There are a couple of reference points that you can use. You can use a reference point on your dashboard. Get in your car, park up on the left, somewhere near the curb. You will see the curb somewhere along the middle of your dashboard. And then the further you move away from the curb, the further to the left that will go. There are a couple of other things that you could be judging as well. So if you're moving into a bay, if you imagine your line of sight is here and I've got about say 20 centimeters to the outer edge of my car here from my line of sight. Well, if I'm looking at a bay in front of me, and I put my line of sight on the right hand side of the bay, I'm probably gonna have a nice 15 to 20 centimeters on my left hand side that will give me enough room and wiggle room to then tuck it in afterwards. So I'm gonna pull up on the left here again. So again, checking my mirrors and a signal, my speed is reducing. Getting into this bay here, it's just too difficult for me to get it straight. So instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive across here now and this is a pretty good example. Too often on lessons and on tests, I see people trying to tuck in without being able to get straight. If you need to, just move forwards to the next bay. Now, if I was using the reference point of my center point of my dashboard, I could use that just there. That kind of works. It's about in the middle of my dashboard, just there. And I can see that I'm nicely judged against the curb, but I, I just wouldn't use that. I would have used the outer edge of the bay. And again, checking in my mirror, I'm bang on the curb. Notice I didn't look at it until the very end. Keep your eyes front. If you can understand normal driving position, as in when you're driving down the road and you can position approximately one meter or so from parked cars, then you already have an understanding of the space. It's just combining a pressure point, which is moving in on the left, which is probably the anxiety that's connected to that because you've hit it a few times and all of a sudden our judgment goes out the window. But if you can position in a normal driving position, then the likelihood that you're going to be able to judge this is not so bad. If you'd like a little bit more information on normal driving position, I'll stick a card up in the left hand side. You can go and have a look 
look at that and that will help you to see if you're able to judge the space. Again, using this reference point that I've just given you. Try not to look too close to the bonnet of your car. So looking too close to the curb or on the bonnet of the car as you're approaching the pull up on the left, that's also going to mess your judgment up. Look further up the road to line things up. When moving into a tighter gap, I'm not saying this is a massively tight gap. Again, I check my mirrors, I'm going to signal. Now, I'm not going to look at that curb there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the outer edge of that vehicle there and this line here, and I'm going to keep my line of sight here on this outer edge here. Now, not one point have I looked across to this left-hand side. I'll do that at the end, but I've done all of that keeping my eyes front. If I then look at this mirror, I'm going to see quite clearly I'm nicely into the curb. That's looking pretty good but I've lined up with the vehicle in front. Now, all of that was done eyes front. Now, when moving in into a tight space, it's going to be very difficult for you to tuck it in. Don't try to tuck it right in. It's just not possible. Even an experienced driver would really struggle to do that. Just get yourself nice into a certain amount and then you can always reverse the car back in straight afterwards. And remember, that's what the reverse gear is for if you're parking in real life. When it comes to your driving test, you don't want to be reversing, you just want to get a reasonable distance. And I'll also show you how I judge it when I'm moving up on the right-hand side. When I'm pulling up on the right, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to judge because simply it's my side of the road. So I'm gonna move in. I'm not gonna try and get into this bay here just simply because it's just a little bit too close. So what I'm gonna do here, because the oncoming car is coming, I'm just gonna slow it down for a second. When you're pulling up on the right, you need to make sure it's nice and safe. I'm not quite tucked in as much as I want to be. So I'm not quite finished. I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and safe for me to move again. And then as I move in, because it's my line of sight, surely that's going to be very, very easy, but I can see the curb is somewhere about there on my dashboard. But if I look at the bay, I'm seated sort of just the right-hand side of that bay in front, so I must be in the bay. If I look in the mirror, it's not quite bang on, but it's certainly enough. When I'm pulling up on the right-hand side, I don't want to be right on the curb. That's going to look something like that. I'm that far from the curb. Now, the other thing that you've got to be very careful of is your steering. You've got to make sure that when you're steering, you're not oversteering or understeering. It should be gentle. It should always be really smooth. When it comes to steering, try not to oversteer it. If I'm approaching, if I want to pull up on the left, my steering is going to be more gradual. Don't bring it in too sharply. So here again, if you look at my steering, it's nice and gradual, nothing too heavy, nice and easy. Again, looking at this line in front of me, haven't looked on that left wing mirror yet. Nice and straight, looking up the road. It's looking pretty good to me. And again, I'm nice and tight on the curb. That's how far I am from the curb. The two major reasons why you're messing up pulling up on the left is a speed and where you're looking. There are a couple of other factors like making sure that you're not oversteering and that you are not trying to be perfect. If you'd like to know a little bit more about your routines for turning left, well then that video is up here. And if you'd like a little bit more on how to steer and steering techniques, well that video is over here. I hope this video has been of value to you. If you have, hit the like button, subscribe if you like more content, and I will see you in the next one. Get well out.